The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Sunday, April 6th, 2014. Hello and welcome in to eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time, where you can interact with us with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And now with Sunday afternoon's questions and answers, here's Chris McCann. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship Sunday afternoon question and answer time. At this time, we're going to open up the room to receive your phone calls and uh, to receive your questions or your comments. Each person is invited to share what's ever on your mind by contacting us in one of the ways that were just mentioned. And we'll be happy to take your call. Or if you're listening through Pal Talk, you can enter your question or comment into the text and it'll be relayed to us in this room and we'll take your question that way. Each person, again, is invited to share whatever is on your mind as long as it relates to the Bible. And I'll try to respond as much as possible by turning to the Bible, the Word of God. Well, we're going to begin by going to the first person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hello, Chris. Could you please read Ezekiel 22, 1 to 3, and Nahum 3, verse 1? Ezekiel 22, 1 through 3. Ezekiel 22, 1 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Then say thou, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, The city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself to defile herself. And you want to compare that with Nahum 1? Nahum 3, verse 1. Nahum 3. Okay. Verse 1. Says, um... Woe to the bloody city, it is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. You um, you think, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask what your Um, question was. Is God um, saying Jerusalem typified by the churches of our day as the bloody city? Churches now, the feeding, um, the people that remain there with lies and false gospels? Well, uh, actually, um, in Nahum, the uh, subject is Nineveh. Nineveh uh-huh. is uh, the one being spoken of, but Nineveh, uh, I think we can we can say is being used as a type of the corporate church. Nineveh okay. was the um, capital city of the Assyrians, and and just as say Babylon uh, was used by God to overcome uh, Judah of old. Well, the Assyrians, or Nineveh, was used by God to overcome Israel in the north. And once Babylon overcame the church, the church, or excuse me, I sometimes get mixed up uh, between the historical type and and the spiritual uh, application. Once Spiritually, God over uh, used Satan to overcome the churches. Then, the churches became a part of the kingdom of Satan. Just just like historically, when Babylon would conquer Judah, Judah became a province of Babylon. Or when the Assyrians would comp- conquer Israel, Israel or Samaria became uh, uh, a province of Assyria. And so here, it's Nineveh, but um, let's see, in Zephaniah, does it say bloody city or oppressing city? In Zephaniah 3, woe to her that is filthy and polluted, in, in Zephaniah 3, 1, to the oppressing city. It, it It's um, also a figure of the corporate church. And, and so Nineveh in um, Nahum, it is a type of the of the corporate church. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. Thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, yes, Chris. Uh, would you please uh, read Joshua eleven thirteen, and then I have another question. Joshua 11, 11 13. And verse 13 says, um, But as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only, that did Joshua burn. Could you uh, explain what the, that means, stood still in their strength? Well, um, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Huh? Okay, I have another question in uh, Isaiah 10, 15, uh, the Acts. Isaiah 10, 15. Uh, let's read a little bit of the context. Um, in verse 12, Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, it will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, by the strength of my hand, I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand has found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up? Or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood? Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And what's your question about um, verse 15? What does the um, axe and the sword represent? Well, uh, that's just the picture that God is giving, that um, an axe and, and um, what's the, the saw are tools, and an axe and a saw by themselves, they're, they're uh, not going to do anything. They're, they're going to stay in the shed and nothing will be cut. It takes a man to put his hand um, to the axe and, and to the saw in order to utilize the tool. And so God is he's, he's comparing the axe and the saw. Notice what he compares it to as if the rod should shake itself, or as if the staff should lift up itself. Now, why the rod and the staff? Because yeah. back in verse 5 of Isaiah 10, it said, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. So what happened was that God raised up the Assyrians and the king of Assyria to come against his own people as a means of bringing judgment uh, on Samaria, on Israel in the north. And, and then the Assyrians, they, they got all puffed up by this. They, uh, I mean, when we see their, uh, their approach to Jerusalem uh, later, and as they besiege Jerusalem and, and the threats they make and, and how they say, look, we've conquered everyone, including Samaria. The Lord has given us Samaria. And you can just see the pride and arrogance. And, and so God is, is speaking to them and he's saying, look, you conquered my people Israel because it was my will. You know, you put the, the hand yeah. okay. <laughs> in, to the axe, and the, and the hand in the Bible represents the will. So God put his hand to the rod and staff, the Assyrians, and used them to destroy Israel, but now they're getting puffed up. And spiritually, this would relate to the time of the end, 
when Jesus, the Lord Jesus, loosed Satan and Satan entered into the churches and and he was a destroying weapon in the hand of God, but he got he he was puffed up in pride and he thought how great he was as the man of sin taking his seat in the temple and and God is just pointing out look uh you're nothing you're you're nothing without me you're an instrument that i used and mm -hmm. once i put you down then uh, then that's it okay thank you so much for your explanation you're welcome thank you for calling and sharing that verse and let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? I'm doing Hello. well. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Chris, could you please read Jeremiah 51, 6? And to compare that with um, Matthew 13, 37 through 39. Um. Jer Jeremiah 51, 6. Yes. Uh, and compare with what? Matthew, uh, the parable of the weeds. Um, uh, Matthew 13, 13, verses 37 to uh, 39. Okay. In Jeremiah 51, verse 6, it says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Jehovah's vengeance, he will render unto her a recompense. And then in um, Matthew 13, yes, verses 36 and 37. Uh, uh, verse, no, verse 37 to 39. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Matthew 13, 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Uh, with, uh, in your study today, uh, you said that um, when we proclaimed the uh, message of the end of the world, um, that we were sowing the good seed, and then uh, now we are reaping. It's time of reaping. Uh, now, uh, if I, uh, I understand correctly, Jeremiah 51, 6, would that verse, God give the command to the elect um, that, uh, the, uh, that we should uh, proclaim to the world that, to come out of the church, uh, of the churches and congregations? Now, uh, tying that with the, uh, uh, um, with the explanation of the parable of the, of the wheat and tares that, God, that Jesus gave, uh, gave to the elect, when we uh, proclaimed the uh, end of the church age and the call to the elect to come out of the churches, that, that identifies with the sowing of the good seed. But my thing is this here, in, the, uh, uh, in this parable, Jesus explains exactly the role of each person. In other words, the good seed says is the son of man, and uh, uh, the reapers are the angels. If we uh, sow and we reap, what is the uh, role of the angels, really? Because many times you did say that, uh, and I understand that, the function of the angels is really, um, I, I know that they are uh, uh, the ministers of uh, uh, God, but sometimes, uh, many times, they do not identify with the uh, true believers. But what is oh, my question? Oh, I see. What so you're is, asking about the, the angelic beings, yes. not true believers. Uh, yes, who, if true we believers are angels in the sense the of a messenger, but there are if, angelic oh, beings. Uh, what do they do? Yes, if we always identify, uh, we say that the angels are the true believers. The angels, like in Revelation yeah. fourteen, mm -hmm. what is the role? Uh, you know, if we do everything, uh, I know it's a symbolic language. I'm trying to understand what is really the role of the angels. Uh, Symbolically, spiritually, really. Well, they they uh, minister to the heirs of salvation, and and that's uh, not a little thing. 
We don't know yeah. how they do it. Um, we we know that that God has um, legions of angels, and and that they are spirit beings, and that He uses them. And and again, an angel. The word angel is messenger, so they are also messengers of God, but um, they're used in a different way. And uh, I don't know how God uses uh, invisible beings to help. Uh, that's what being a uh, minister would be. You you serve, you, uh, you minister to the needs of the heirs of salvation. And I don't know how God does that, but... But that's what the Bible tells us. What, what I'm trying to find out is that in every reference that we read in the Bible of the angels, then we should think of that as the true believers, not the angels. No, no, I, I don't think we oh. should. I think we have to take it verse by verse. Um, sometimes an angel is speaking of Christ. Sometimes yes. it's the true believer. And... and um, in Hebrews 1, it is angels. So right. so we just take it verse by verse, wherever yeah, we, yeah. we, what we know is that the word angelos, translated mm -hmm. as angel, is also translated as messenger. And so uh, that, that is really how we should translate it as messenger. And, and that will help us in understanding, well, um, who's in view is it right. is it the child of god or is it an actual spirit being but, yeah, but thank you in the, for in the calling. parable of the weeds uh, verse 38 is really uh, specified as the good seed is the sons of the kingdom while in 39 it says that the reapers are the angels there's a specific distinction there and since you said today that uh, the uh, reapers are the angels i uh, no it's us uh, then I was a little confused because there's a real clear distinction here well, on this. Well, look parable. at John. Um, John is a chapter three, where it says, um, or John four. John four, it says in verse thirty-seven. No, I'm sorry. I'll begin in verse thirty-six. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Now here Christ is speaking to believers. And he yeah, sent but the other one them was on the relation to reap. of the end of times. The uh, the other I'm not I'm not trying to, to argue with you. It's just that uh, relation the uh, one in uh, in the um, parable of the weeds, the one the parable in the weeds is specifically speaking of the end of times. But well, I understand. Well, that. actually, when we read in um, in verse thirty nine, you know the separation that um, mm. the harvest is the end of the world. The word world is age, and the oh, reapers yeah. are the messengers. Then if we okay. keep reading, verse 40 is, Therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. When did that happen? That happened May 21. And yeah. uh, were there spirit angels that, that came and did that? No, that was simply a declaration that came forth from the word of God. And so shall it be in the end of this age. Again, the word world is age. The Son of Man yeah. shall send forth his messengers and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, the wailing and gnashing of teeth identifies with uh, the, the period of judgment day uh, since May 21, 2011. People uh, who are contrary to what God is declaring in his word uh, are mm -hmm. as weeping and gnashing of teeth. They're, they're fighting against it. So okay. the events that are being described are actually taking place mm -hmm. over the course of, of this prolonged period of judgment. And then, you know, we, we think of that last day. We think of the final end and the destruction of the world and, and, mm -hmm. and the gathering up 
and and so that's probably why we tend to think of angels but but here it's describing the 1600 days in all likelihood but thank okay. you okay all right thank you okay thank Bye-bye. you for calling and sharing and let's go to a question from pal talk um alive and remain writes so tell us all mr chris mccann the simple answer please is the donations of your e bible fellowship in any way providing for your financial earthly needs such as food clothing and shelter tell us mr chris mccann your personal testimony of just exactly who you are and exactly how you do it well um yeah i'd be happy to it, you know i i uh, of course uh noticed that there are accusations and um since May 21, uh, there's been all kinds of accusations and email, and some people have developed a campaign where they have accused me and eBible of uh, pilfering money and, and so forth. And none of that is true. Not at all. We, uh, we did not even uh, use... Or, or let me put it, we receive no money from family radio uh, for the billboards. What what we would do when we were working in that area, we would set up the billboard contract with an advertiser wherever in the world, and then family radio would wire the funds directly to pay the advertiser. We never touched the money. And, and so there's been accusations along those lines. Uh, there, there's been accusations that we've stolen or I've stolen widow's funds, and that's a lie. It, it, the, the person um, used funds uh, to, uh, to do her own billboard campaign, and I didn't even know about it until afterwards. And, and uh, she actually did a great deal of coverage in one state. And I was amazed, and I said, "How are you able to do that?" And and I, I was told something, and uh, E Bible had nothing to do with that at all. But let me let me take a little time because there have been accusations, and I know that um, uh, there are people that are supporting E Bible to share the word to get the message out. And so let me just tell you this that um, from in 2001, uh, eBible became uh, a ministry. We, we became um, a Christian ministry and, and a nonprofit organization. And I worked um, most of the time from 2001, um, I worked two jobs. I, I worked at a company called Vanguard. And I worked um, later on in 2005 for Family Radio. And I received nothing from eBible um, from 2001 until um, the beginning of 2013. Now, what, what happened was in 2008, I left my job at Vanguard and I, I did so because uh, the time was short. And I felt a need to get uh, involved full time in the sending forth of the gospel. And so I I left that job and I was making $60,000 a year when I left, counting bonuses and everything. And and I started working part time at Family Radio um, because they had something called medical assistance. And since I left the job, I left behind all medical benefits and uh, well, I was working, uh, actually, I started working 2005 at Family Radio for that reason. Looking ahead, I, I was thinking, well, maybe I can uh, be helped with the medical assistance program at Family Radio for my children. Um, I have four children and my wife and myself. And so I left that job and uh, I was working part time at Family Radio and I withdrew my IRA uh, account from Vanguard that had $72,000 in it. And we lived off of that 
from 2008 until 2011. And um, we had no other income except just working part time, um, maybe 15, uh, the maximum 20 hours at Family Radio. And so we used up the complete IRA at present. I have no IRA. I at present um, probably have a couple of thousand dollars in the bank uh, with pretty close to that amount of bills due. Um, savings is one thousand dollars, and um, and and so we we were able to plan it out until May twenty one twenty eleven. We had funds sufficient. I wasn't thinking about anything afterwards at all. And so we used up our resources, um, bank account, IRA, and everything else. And uh, after May 21, I began working uh, full-time for Family Radio for a short period of time. And there were a couple of friends that were helping us um, with funds. They were viewing us, I think, as the sort of supporting a missionary. And and that went on until um, the end of 2011 and the beginning of 2012. And then uh, Family Radio no longer wanted to um, uh, associate with me and NE Bible. And well, I, at that time, actually, I shouldn't put it that way. Um, they they just had no room uh, for for uh, the work I was doing, and and so I stopped working there. and And it turns out that uh, the Lord was providing. Um, I would I would just open up the mail, and there would be um, a check with funds of support from an individual that I would uh, I wouldn't expect. And and um, throughout the year of 2012. There were individuals that God moved. I didn't ask anyone. I, I um, that that um, there was individuals that were supporting us, um, and and uh, looking to do that. I think as support of a missionary, as as we were sharing the gospel, and and so that was fine. But um, I noticed that that with the teaching the ongoing teaching that uh, there was always the problem uh, that, uh, that, well, a- anyway, what, what happened was in the beginning of 2013, in January, uh, we made a decision where I would work full-time for eBible. And, uh, you know, this uh, uh, this is similar to individuals that work full-time for family radio. I'm sure if you were to put side-by-side the amount of funds that family radio allocates to staff and the amount that eBible allocates, it, it, eBible's amount is minimal. We, we have um, about five or six people. Everyone's working part-time but me. And the amount that... that um, uh, people are receiving is very little. Now, um, I'm receiving $29,700 salary. That That's the amount for this year, 2014. And uh, I have a family, again, of four children, family of six. Uh, we're trying to get by, and um, that is the amount that that I think enables us to get by. And, and so um, it, it is not what I would want. It is not what I would desire. I would want to continue as I did from the beginning in 2001. I would want to, to do it for free, for nothing, but I can't. And, and so really the decision came that I could go get a job and find work, and I've done that. I've worked two jobs plus taught at eBible for many years. And and yet I also realized that if I do that, um, I, I have experience. I know how much 
study and and Bible teaching I would be able to do, and it would be nowhere near what I've been able to do since uh, devoting full time to e Bible. And so I made a decision, and the decision was this: I personally um, do not like taking anything for the gospel. As a matter of fact, uh, I hate it. And, and uh, in the sense that Mr. Camping has always been the ideal. And he, I know he never took a penny. And, and that always stuck in my mind. And I always appreciated that. And, and so it, it took a lot for me to get to the point where, all right, I, I'm going to have to be supported in order to continue teaching full time. And I know that this is going to be a cause of criticism and people will try to use it as a, a way of, um, of, of coming against the teaching of e-Bible. And that's exactly what it is. They cannot argue the Bible and and so they will argue other things to try and 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 um, discredit what is being said. And I realize that. And I realize to me, this is as a thorn in the flesh. And and so uh, I but I made a decision. Well, uh, I'm going to do this, and and I'll have to put up with all the comments and criticisms and charges that I'm after money. And which really is uh, offensive to me uh, because uh, during many years, um, for instance, at, at Vanguard, when I worked there for 16 years, I could have moved on to better paying job, but I stayed where I was um, uh, uh, because it, it gave me a little additional time being in the particular job I was in to study. And I could have moved on one time if I would have compromised and worked on Sunday, but I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, what, uh, I never go after money, uh, especially when the Bible uh, is, is concerned. And uh, my family, my wife, has really put up with a life uh, not too far above poverty for several years now. She had no medical um, no dental for years, um, and and we're very familiar with thrift shops. We we food shop at Save a Lot and Aldi and Price Right, and I can tell you the prices of the items in the aisles. Uh, we my wife cuts my hair. I don't go to the barber. I haven't for years. I do not have a cell phone, uh, and one big reason is the cost. We have a van, a one vehicle that that we bought in 2004. It's still running by the grace of God. It's closing in on 120,000 miles, and we would like to continue using that for as much as we can. Now, my children, two of them are in college, and they both have jobs, and they are there because they have received grants and loans. And they pay the full amount. I am not able to contribute anything towards their college, except that we let them live at home um, where we don't charge them rent or anything like that. That's our, our little way of contributing to, to their college um, uh, education. We, we give them room and board for free. And, and well, that's, that's about it. Um, I, um, uh, again, uh, if, if I could take less and we could get by, I would do so. But this is the amount that enables us to pay our bills. Well, thank you for that question. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Uh, hi, Chris. Um, Thank you for that very humble financial statement, so to speak. Uh, uh, we do appreciate you, you know, going to the length that you did to explain all of that. It's, oh, it's I'm sorry. You... I forgot something. Excuse me. I forgot something okay. very important. Okay. 
and and that is my house. Uh, you know, it's uh, um, we do not live in a mansion. We have a, a row home in Darby, and anybody can Google Darby, and and you'll find it's right outside Philadelphia city limits, and it's a a town uh, where it, it it's not the um, it, it's not the best. Uh, but but God has protected us, and we have been kept safe, and we'll be here 20 years, Lord willing, in 2015. Uh, we're we're trying to live as humble as possible uh, with with what God has provided. But yes, please go ahead. Uh, thanks again, Chris. It's very humble of you. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you uh, Revelation 18:7. Um, this is the whore, and she's saying that she's fit a queen. She's no widow, that she's married to the king. And this verse, is, is this talking about the churches? Yes. Um, well, let, let's, let's read here. Um, in, in verse 6, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. You know, um, I'm going to hold off on... Uh, answering that for right now, because Babylon, um, it, it has been a source of confusion, uh, as we had understood it to be the church, and now we're finding a lot of scriptures that identify it as the world, but the church was conquered by, or Judah was conquered by Babylon, just as Satan overcame the churches, and therefore the uh, churches became a part of Babylon, the spiritual Babylon. And I, I would like more time to consider what God is saying in, in these verses in Revelation. We know in verse 2, he, he declares Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, which pinpoints the time as the end of the great tribulation. But, um, it goes on to discuss certain things that that are complicated in the way that they're being presented. And, and I would just like to take um, some additional time since our study in the book of Revelation uh, is in chapter 11 right now. There's some time. There's no hurry. Um, and and uh, just continue to review it. Okay, I understand, but it is, I'm getting a little confused, like a little, like when is God talking about uh, Babylon as the world, and then when is he talking about Babylon the church? It appears in this verse that it, it seems, you know, at a glance, that he's, he's talking about the churches because it's talking about, about a marriage, more of a marriage. I'm not a widow, I'm married to the king, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah. all well, right, but I understand well, the uh, that, that's uh, that's possible. Um, the, it, this is a, a quotation from Isaiah 47. And uh, of course, the New Testament church was never married. The corporate body was never married to Christ as Israel of old was. But, mm -hmm. but this is a, a quotation from Isaiah. And, um, and, and as Israel was married to God, um, and, and then God divorced them, it does, in a way, spiritually point to God ending his relationship with the church, although he, he never entered into a marriage with them as he did Israel. Uh, but, but again, oh. I, I understand that, um, you know, the trouble that, that you might be having. I think, though, that, that a lot of passages have uh, surprisingly become very clear and it's it's basically revelation 18 and not even um the first part it it's just these middle verses here that that need explanation and 
And I'm sure that there is a uh, there is an explanation, but just want to take some time to carefully find it. But thank you for your question and for bringing up uh, that verse. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Brother Chris. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, the gentleman that called and asked the question, you know, in the beginning I was a little bit frustrated about it, but then I was so grateful to God about that question because, you know, you set forth the truth. And for us believers, you know, I feel very spoiled when I hear what you said because I, I have my mini, my phone, my everything, and all I want in all these things is to hear the Word of God. And I'm privileged to work at a place where I could put my earphone on and I've got a Bible all day long, you know, nobody cares because I do my work. And this past week, I, you know, the Revelation studies and many of the studies were just going on straight through. And, you know, I just want to call my sister and tell her this, and I just want to call people because I have been so privileged, even in this day of darkness, even though, you know, I think it's come down hard on me, this testing, but I am so grateful for this fellowship. I am so grateful for these studies there is no word to describe how grateful I am to the living God. Um, and I just want to thank you for the effort because nobody understands how difficult this word is. But lately it hasn't been, you know, sometimes I'll open it and things will sound so clear and I just almost shut it because it's like, what am I reading? You know, is this really happening? Is what we're going through really happening? Because it's such an amazing thing, even though it is so difficult, that hope still has not left me. So, Thank you to you, thank you to your family, to everybody, Guy, Robert, Barry, all these people who we've become familiar with and, you know, Grace and, you know, who's, we know who's going to be on the phone that asks questions. We're just, I am thankful and grateful to you. And if you could just read to me Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1, um, and through verse 1 through 3, because that's really, that's what's happening, you know. It's just a feast. It's a feast upon the Word of God. And it's hard for people to understand it's all about this Bible, and everything is coming from this Bible. Um, so thank you very much. And God well, bless the you. Bible, and God bless everybody. Well, thank you for calling and, and sharing. I'm glad that um, the Lord is blessing you through His Word. In Ezekiel 3, beginning in verse 1, Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, Eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Now, uh, in Ezekiel 2, God uh, um, commands Ezekiel to stand upon his feet, and he will be sent to the children of Israel, a rebellious house. And, and so this identifies with the time of the, after the three and a half days when the two witnesses were lying dead in the street, and then they stood upon their feet. It identifies with the latter rain period, with the sending forth of the gospel there. And there is similar language uh, as God commissioned Ezekiel, uh, um, as, as he was an example of the believers, to eat the word of the Lord. And, it, and the word of the Lord is always sweet. And, and then to prophesy. And later on in Ezekiel 3, um, in verse 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. And and that is the task, the role that God gave to his people to perform uh, during the, the days leading up to Judgment Day. Blow the trumpet, warn the people. And, and now in um, a, a similar verse in Revelation 10, uh, verse 11, God says to his people through the Apostle John, they all must prophesy again and and that is after eating the roll. And, but this time it's bitter in our belly because we're, we're not to blow the trumpet and warn the people. The people have already been warned. 
but but the information we share that comes forth from the Spirit of God, which means the Bible, is bitter water um, because there is no more salvation. But thank you for sharing and for bringing up this verse. And let's go to the next caller. Welcome to our Sunday question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Um, I just wanted to um, comment on your um, long, humble statement. Um, first of all, I didn't even know people were questioning you with um, things of that nature. And I've been listening to you for a long time. And I just wanted to say that I think most people that listen to you are listening for the gospel. We're not, we're not here to try to figure out how you pay your bills and how you're getting along because uh, personally I know for myself that I, I don't even know how I get along. Um, but your ministry, I'm very appreciative of it because I, I need it in my life. I have hope and I need it. So that is why I listen and I think that is why most of us listen. So whoever doesn't want to listen, they should just turn, turn the channel. It, it, it just takes something very simple as turning the channel and keep doing the work that you do, and God bless you. Thank you. Well, thank you for for sharing. Now, um, I can understand, uh, um, you know, people want to be able to to trust that when they are supporting a ministry that the funds that they're um, – uh, they're giving are being used in a right way. I can understand that. Now with family radio, um, family radio was around so long and uh, we, we learned uh, a lot about them. We knew how the funds were being used. And we also knew, and, and it was comforting that Mr. Camping didn't take anything. And, and and so there was no financial motive. It wasn't even a question because of that. Now, uh, the reason Mr. Camping uh, was able to be in that position is because he had a construction company in the 50s. I, I believe he built churches, and, um, and, and God blessed that uh, effort. And, and so he was able to sell his company and, and uh, for a good deal of money. And, and then live off um, the proceeds of that uh, for the rest of his life, as far as I understand. And so he, he uh, had no financial need um, he, uh, due to, well, God, God's the one who, who did all that. God's the one who set him up that way. And, and that enabled Mr. Camping to uh, be free of any kind of criticism concerning money and and actually we see even at the end when may 21 2011 didn't happen as people thought what's the first thing that uh, the first charge you heard oh family radio was just out to make money and i even heard that mr camping made millions what uh, uh what foolishness what uh, what um error that is when anybody who knows him or family radio knows that uh, all the the money went towards the gospel but the the problem is that um i'm not in, in that sort of position i uh, uh, i'm i've never been a rich person i've always been a worker and and so i have no um uh, you know um large amount of money in the bank to live off of and and so it comes down to uh, either work and and do this part time or do this full time and and um, work through e Bible and and I decided well uh, I'm going to work through e Bible that that uh, it's the only way I can do uh, this full time as far as teaching and and so we're attempting to keep that. Um, salary down it is a salary it's set for the year and, and nothing changes it we're attempting to keep that down as much as possible and in order to use um, the funds that come in before getting the gospel out but thank you for calling and sharing and let's go to the next caller welcome 
to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Oh, very good, Chris. Uh, good to hear all the reports here. This was a good filler. Uh, what's not a faith is sin. I believe uh, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, it says, if we have sown and used spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? It's fine for spiritual and to be paid carnal things by those that listen. That's just if God puts it on their heart. So I, I, I yeah, absolutely, uh, it's good that you do this. You're doing it as unto the Lord. Uh, really, yes, I was going to say Mr. Campy had his retirement from you know, selling his business. So he was able to, because of God's mercy and grace, then be free to completely, uh, whatever, God just said. Um, so I just want to say thanks for all you're doing. It's really good to study this morning on summary of harvest and the um, and the judgment day was just excellent. So I just want to say thank you. And uh, uh, earthclinic.com is a pretty nice site, Chris. Anyway, may God oh, bless you. And keep yes, you. yes. Thank you better. for sharing those websites with um, um, information about medicine. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Yes. Good afternoon, brother. Could you please read, um, chime in on the brother that just called in, First Corinthians chapter 9, um, 13 through 18, please. First Corinthians nine thirteen says, Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel." Well, before you comment, I just like to comment myself, and I thank you for um, your humbleness that you brought to the listeners today concerning your affairs, which you didn't have to do, but you did. And everything happened for a reason. And the, the, the question that was posed by the brother is it's a fair question. And uh, but you know, you are right where God wants you to be. Anybody is right where God would be, where God wants them to be at any given time. And it's laid upon you to do what you're doing. And yes, you gave up a lot, but God gives to give, and you cannot give God. So what he has given you to give, he's going to replace. You're not going to run out. I met you um, the last family radio um, conference that we had down in Townsend, Maryland. And I just started listening to you consistently when you was doing the Kurum teaching, and I, I, I know um, when it didn't come to pass how you was very upset and you was not ready to walk away, and I was praying to God that you wouldn't do so, because as I listened to you, consistently you have been consistent, and that shows a lot in any person, consistency. Now, you're not going to find many people that will love you or care for you, but it doesn't matter because you are be faithful to the word of God and you have been consistent and I've known you. So I've been listening to you and I tell anyone, you're spot on. I call, you You, you know some my calls, I normally call the first caller, but I wasn't going to call today. But when that call came in, I went to these scriptures here and I want you to tell me what they're saying here. I know it was due to the church, but I want you to tell me what they're saying, these scriptures that we just read. But brother, just keep doing what you're doing. God will provide. I am a true believer, and I know what he's done for me. And there's nothing that I've ever asked for have not received from God. So I'm telling you, 
to keep doing what you're doing, and God will provide. Well, thank you for uh, sharing and and for bringing up this passage. And I, um, you know, I, I'd rather not comment on this or on the previous pass or previous caller's verse, um, because it it just would appear as if uh, as if I'm trying to justify things. But the Bible does lay down the principle that um, that yes, uh, there there's nothing wrong. There's there is nothing unbiblical about um, someone receiving funds, whether during the church age or um, in these days after the tribulation or whenever, uh, for working in the gospel. Uh, it, it's, it, that's not the problem. The, the problem is that we had such a wonderful um, ideal, uh, or Mr. Camping presented such a, a wonderful example of someone laboring freely in the gospel and and that is an ideal that um i uh, I, I myself wanted to uh obtain and strive for but uh, but um and and that's what i mean when i when i say it's as a thorn in my side i don't like it personally it maybe it's a a point of pride with me but I don't like it that um, that I uh, I take even a penny uh, in order to live, and even though I know it's according to the Bible, that's why I say it's probably a point of pride, and maybe God is doing this to humble me uh, during this time. It, it's it's um, another means where where the Lord uh, is is trying me and testing me, but I do appreciate your your call and your comments and let's well, go to well, yes i just want to say i just want to say that i i respect what you, what you said about you don't want to comment on the the verses that we read but what we read was not chris's words we read god's word and we, it, it explains itself okay and furthermore mr cabin was blessed by god to be in the position that he was to be able to not accept anything Okay, you are where God puts you, and you are in the position where God has you. So, yes, you know, you had to do what you had to do to survive, because God's going to take care of his own. So, don't worry about, you know, whatever, whatever others say. Just keep doing what you're doing, and I will continue to pray for you and your family that God's will will be done. Thank you very much, brother. Well, thank you for calling and, and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome. To our Sunday afternoon question and answer program, please go ahead with your call. Good afternoon. In Ezekiel chapter 4, as a sign, God tells Ezekiel to lie on his side 390 days for Israel and 40 days for Judah as a sign for the years of their iniquity. Now, that sums to 430 years, might associate it with the number of years they were in Egypt, or you might associate it with the 1290 days, Daniel 12. But can you see any spiritual meaning to what it means by the years of their iniquity, and why is it divided 390 for Israel and 40 for Judah? Thank you. Well, uh, I think Mr. Camping laid this out pretty well in one of his books. The, the 430, we, we do think of the length of time that Israel um, was in, in Egypt. And then three times 430 is 1290. And, and from the, the entering in, of Egypt in 1877, if you go 1290 years, it takes you to 587 BC, which was the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And then if you triple the 1290, we, we had 430, we tripled it, and we, we went from um, a point, 1877, there was a dividing point of the seven-year famine that typified the Great Tribulation, to 
um, 587, which was the dividing point within the 70-year period that typified the Great Tribulation. And then if we triple it again, I believe it's uh, 3,870 years, and that uh, from um, 1877 takes us to 1994 A.D., a dividing point in the midst of the actual Great Tribulation. Now, um, uh, as far as the 40 and 390, if I remember right, um, and, I, and I, I'm just referring to Mr. Camping because he is the one who discovered this, you know, by God's grace, the 40 days, um, which one was 40? Let's see. Judah. 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 The 40 days of Judah relates to um, when, when uh, Jacob was born in 2007 BC, and then you go uh, 4,000 years and and um, that brings us to 1994, if that's right. Let me see. 2007. Yeah, yeah, that's 4,000 years. And then 100 years after that, in 1907 B.C., Jacob was 100, and he had his name changed to Israel. And, and so from that point in 1907 B.C., if you go to 1994, it's 3,900 years, and uh, I think that that uh, that that would um, be what's in view here. But thank wow, you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling and sharing. And let's see if we have another question. The same person on Pal Talk, alive and remain. First Corinthians 9:14. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. These are questions from me. What is the difference between God taking on the appearance of a man and God taking on a human nature? If when God would take on the appearance of a man, was that not a human being? Well, you're, you're referring to um, historical uh, situations where, for instance, Melchizedek uh, entered into history, in, in uh, we read in the account of Genesis, and he took on the appearance of a man. But he was not a man it, in the sense he was not born. It, uh, remember in Hebrews 7, when we're reading of Melchizedek, God says of him, having uh, neither father nor mother, or, well, maybe that's not correct. Let me read that. Hebrews 7 says um, in, in verse 3, referring to Melchizedek, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So there God is appearing as a man, but he's not a man because men are born. Men are born with a father, uh, with a mother. They have a descent, a lineage, and, and so forth. And, and so that was not true of Melchizedek, but it was true of Jesus when he was born of the Virgin Mary and, and the Holy Spirit was his father, and his stepfather was uh, Joseph. And, um, and then we read, what is God, what's the first thing God does after the birth is to give us the genealogy in Matthew and the genealogy of, of uh, Mary in one hand in Matthew, I think, and in and, and, um, Luke, it's uh, the genealogy of Joseph, who was supposed to be the father. And, and that's to show that Christ was a man. He had a mother, he had a father, he had a lineage. And that's the difference between that and God making an appearance like Melchizedek or when God appeared to Joshua as the captain of the host or, or any other of those appearances. But thank you for your question. And I would like to um, thank everyone for sharing 
your questions and comments this afternoon. It's always a blessing when we can gather together and and we can wonder about the Word of God, wonder about the Bible, wonder what it says. And uh, I appreciate each question and each uh, of your comments, and especially the Bible verses that we had an opportunity to read and consider. But we have come to the end of our time. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to return to our online fellowship with further uh, hymn singing and scripture reading. And please join us later tonight on Facebook um, during our Sunday uh, open question and answer uh, in our Facebook group from 9 to 10.30 p.m. But for now, have a good afternoon. And thanks for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. You can join us for these questions and answers sessions Sunday afternoon following Sunday studies and Monday and Friday evenings following the Monday and Friday evening studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.